welcome to our fourth week of the CTL Lent course, Where the Lost Things Go, by Mary, it's based on the film Mary Poppins Return. The previous week we looked at loss. This week it's looking at being lost. And it's an interesting thing to think about the difference between loss and lost. My mind went back to a film that Deirdre Bethany and I saw at, in Crawley Cinema about three years ago. The film was Lion. It was about an Indian family, a small boy aged five, Saru, um, went looking for coal on a freight train following his brother. Uh, they needed coal uh, to change that for food, being a poor family. As a five-year-old, he decided he wanted a nap on the train. He slept. His older brother couldn't wake him. The train went off without him. He ended up in a different part of India, lost. He couldn't explain as a five-year-old to the guard where home was. Fast forward. Twenty years later, this boy lived in Melbourne and he finds out where his home was. But all that time, he was lost. Think about his mother, or even his younger sister, lost. So that's what I want us to think about at the moment. Of course, lost is a word that also has overtone, overtones for more, that lost woman. In the film Mary Poppins, Michael, the father, has lost his wife, who organised his life, kept things running smoothly. He's lost in his bereavement. He's also lost because of his financial position, in serious debt and the house is being repossessed. And at this stage, he has little hope. Well, let's look at the questions in the book. Ah oh, yes, interesting enough, the first question is, is feeling lost the same as being lost? The second question is, as a Christian, are you responsible for lost souls? And the third question is, what does it mean to be found? Why don't you pause the video and consider those questions now. Is feeling lost the same as being lost? As a Christian, are you responsible for lost souls? And three, what does it mean to be found? Our first reading of the three readings that it's given us is from Psalm 107. Psalm 107 is a thanksgiving psalm. It's a psalm where it gives thanks for the God who does find us, who does redeem us, who answers our prayers. So it's the first nine verses. Let me read it to you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe and gathered from the far of the lands, from the east and the west, the north and the south. They wandered in the barren deserts, finding no way to a city to dwell in. They were hungry and thirsty, their souls were fainting within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their need, and he rescued them from it from their distress and he guided them among the straight paths to reach the city they could dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for his children of Adam. He satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things. So we have four questions here. I'll read the questions and then you can pause and think about them. The first question of the four is, what is the psalm 
asking of us. The second question. Their soul fainted within them. What does that mean to you? The third question. Why do you think there are so many wilderness stories in the Bible? And the fourth question. Why do you believe the psalmist felt he must tell us this? Why do you believe the psalmist felt he must tell us this? Why not pause and consider these points? Our second Bible reading is Luke 15 verses 8 to 10. Well Luke 15, 8 to 10 is the parable of the lost coin. Luke 15 tells us three parables and it's what I call the chapter of the lost. First of all, we're introduced to the lost sheep, then the lost coin, and thirdly, the lost son, or we often call the prodigal son. Here we, this parable talks about a woman who has lost a coin. Now this coin means much to her and she needs to find it. There's two reasons why we, I can think straight away why this coin needs to be found. One, it's valuable. It's uh, a coin that would be worth at least a day's wages. And for a poor peasant woman, that was a lot of money. The second thing is it came off her headdress. And that was very important on a romantic point of view, on marriage. They would wear a headdress with different coins attached to it. You could even say it's equivalent to losing your wedding ring. It would have been easy to lose in a house. The house probably would have been dark with a very small window. With the floor made of reeds. Very easy to lose. So I read in this Luke chapter 15 verses 8 to 10. Or again, what woman with ten silver coins would not, if she lost one, light a lamp and sweep out the house and search it thoroughly till she found it? And then, when she found it, call it together, call together her friends and her neighbours and say to them, Rejoice with me, I have found the silver coin I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one repentant sinner. We have four questions again. Firstly, how do you feel about Jesus representing God as a woman? Secondly, how does God sweep the house and search for us? Thirdly, the precious coin is entirely blameless for its lostness. Must one earn salvation? And fourthly, why do you believe Luke felt he must tell us the story? It's an awesome thing, thought to think about God sweeping the floor, almost looking for us. This brings us to our third Bible reading. It's Mark 14, 32-42. It's a difficult reading. Jesus has been betrayed by the kiss from Judas. He's in Gethsemane. And in this reading we're almost invited into the private pain of Jesus. Mark 14 verses 32 to 42. They came to the plot of land called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I pray. Then he took Peter and James and John with him. And he began to feel dismay and anguish. And he said to them, My soul is deeply sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here, stay awake. 
And going on a little further, he began falling to the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, this hour might pass away from him. And he said, Abba Father, for you everything is possible. Take this cup away from me, yet not what I want, but you want. He came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Had you not the strength to stay awake one hour? Stay awake and pray, not to enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And one more, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were weighed down and they did not know how they should answer him he came a third time and said sleep on and have your rest enough the hour has come see the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners get up let us go see my betrayer is not far away it's a difficult reading of course, in Luke 22, verse 45, I believe it is, we're told about this. How Jesus prayed with such earnestly, such anguish, that he sweat, sweat great drops of blood, that the capillaries in his temples broke and he sweat blood. Of course, any time Jesus shed blood, that was special. So four more questions. One, how do you explain Jesus instructing the disciples both to sleep on and get up? Two, God does not answer Jesus, why not? Three, does God take away trouble? Four, what do you believe Mark felt he must tell this story? Why do you believe Mark felt he must tell this story? Pause and consider these questions. As Christians, we are taught to pray. Deliver us from evil. Some Bible authors tell us that God intervenes. Mark suggests not. Yet we still pray for help. A prayer. Lord for the lost. We call to you now, out of our fog of pride, of delight in ourselves, of despair in each other, of great clouds of unknowing, to find us, lift us, to bring us home to you. Lord of the found, we call to you now. Show us how to find our way from the wilderness to you. Next time we wander, show us Watch signs point away from you and those which point us home. Lord of celebration, seeing us far off and watching us return, rejoice yet one more time. Amen. Well, there's a lot of food for thought this week in the Lent course. And I'm looking forward to joining you next week for Lent course. Please come join us um, for our Sunday service virtually at 11 o'clock on Sunday and I wish you well. Stay well, stay safe and as we're told, wash our hands. Great is the darkness that covers the earth Oppression, injustice
Ooh. 